Hi everyone. Welcome to Heart Health Matters, a podcast series brought to you by the Chair of Preventive Cardiology of the Maharashtra Institute of Health Sciences, powered by Madhubag Institute of Preventive Cardiology. I am Dr. Aman Kapoor and I welcome you all to this feast of knowledge that is relevant for today's world. The Chair of Preventive Cardiology of the MUHS intends to provide you with the latest information on cardiac health, cardiac diseases, how to prevent them and how to keep your heart healthy. We assure you authenticity stamp on the contents. We shall be sharing with you our expertise, helping you navigate through the complexities of heart health and providing practical tips for preventing heart disease. With each podcast, we'll be covering different topics like risk factors, symptoms, lifestyle changes and treatment options. If you are looking to learn about how to keep your heart and your loved one's heart healthy, then you have come to the right place. Sit up, focus and get the gems from the experts of MUHS and MIPC. World over, the number one killer disease is considered the heart attack caused by blockages in the coronary arteries. Actually, it's a disease of medium-sized arteries, that means the arteries with the diameter of 3 to 5 millimeters, which would mean the coronary arteries of the heart causing the heart attack or carotid arteries going to the brain causing a stroke or paralysis. It could affect the arteries of the kidneys and also leg arteries causing gangrene of the legs. What really clogs the arteries from inside is a fatty substance called cholesterol. All of us actually are quite familiar with this word cholesterol. But there are so many myths surrounding cholesterol that it would be worth clarifying them on a scientific basis. Cholesterol, 70% of it is produced by the liver and 30% contribution only comes from the dietary sources that we eat. Fatty substances, fried items, red meat, and all excess calories, including high carbohydrates like sweets and sugars, contribute to the dietary source of cholesterol. The cholesterol, however, is one of the important substances of various biochemical reactions in the body. Consider like glucose. Glucose is so very important for us, but when it becomes excess, it causes a problem. Same is true about cholesterol. Cholesterol per se actually is quite inert and asymptomatic. A person can have a very high blood cholesterol level, but it doesn't feel anything at all. The effect starts or starts appearing with symptoms only when there is a problem related to the arteries. Therefore, the only way to know whether your cholesterol levels are high or not is by periodic checking. It's a simple blood test. Better to do it on a fasting state, but it's not a must. Nowadays, many cholesterol tests are done when non-fasting. All of us are familiar with the lipid profile. Lipid means fats. This lipid profile checks total cholesterol, triglycerides, LDL, that is the bad cholesterol, and HDL, which is supposedly the good cholesterol. Actually, a lot of water has flown under the bridge, and now the only culprit that is considered singularly responsible for atherosclerosis is the bad cholesterol, low-density lipoprotein LDL cholesterol. The HDL cholesterol, once upon a time, was thought to be a good one and protective one, But all research related to it failed, and that's why it is given up as a good cholesterol. And really no extra attempt should be made to increase the HDL cholesterol as such. The total cholesterol also has lost its relevance over time. Triglycerides contribute in very high levels to atherosclerosis. But hypertriglyceridemia, that means high levels of triglyceride in the blood, is a different disease by itself. It doesn't cause to coronary blockages. It leads to stones in the gallbladder or the pancreas. So it's a different disease probably outside the preview of today's discussion. Thus, we are left with only LDL cholesterol as a chief culprit causing the blockages. 
when we are born, uh, the blood levels are about 30 milligrams per cent. And as we grow adult, it reaches to about 100 milligrams per cent. The theory is that if we maintain our LDLs below 30, probably we'll never ever get any blockages. But it is a highly impractical thought. For India, the levels have been defined as 100 milligrams for a normal adult. Anyone with multiple risk factors like diabetes, blood pressure, smoking, but without a disease can be up to 70. If somebody has a heart attack or atherosclerosis of any kind, the level should be below 55 milligrams per cent. And those individuals who are at very high risk, multiple bypass surgeries, multiple angioplasties, in fact, their LDL levels need to be below 30 milligrams per cent. In order to maintain these levels so low, one has to have a diet which is of adequate calories, but less than 30% portion coming from fats, less than 30% coming from carbohydrates, and other portions coming from mainly plant-related proteins. With this kind of a diet, one is doing one's best to reduce the dietary intake of cholesterol. The liver production has to be stopped by giving a drug called statin. Statin has been one of the major discoveries of human being. From 1970, steadily the coronary artery disease and cardiovascular disease has been going down. It is a discovery which is proven to be even better than the blood thinner aspirin. By good diet, which is devoid of cholesterol, and by the use of statins, if we maintain our cholesterol levels below 100, then you are doing justice to yourself. It is called primary prevention. That means you don't have a disease and you don't want to have a disease. But if somebody already has blockages in the arteries, then the secondary prevention starts. That means we don't want the blockages to grow. We don't want the person to get a heart attack. And for that, you need to maintain your LDL levels really, really low. Just for the understanding part, let's compare high cholesterol with high sugars, that is diabetes. In both these cases, the body's mechanism to control the sugar or the LDL level is faulty. High sugar will lead to complications over a period of time. High LDL will lead to complications like atherosclerosis over a period of time. Lack of exercise and diet rich in cholesterol will lead to increased LDL as it would be seen in sugar as well. And of course, medicines will be required to control sugars. Medicines will be required to control LDL levels. The first check of blood cholesterol level should be done at the age of 20 to identify what is known as a familial hyperlipidemia. Some people are born genetically with high cholesterol levels and they should be diagnosed very early Otherwise, they will come up with heart attacks at very early age. Once the level at 20 is found to be normal, the next check should be done at the age of 30, 40, and after that, based on your medical condition. Other than the statins, there are new agents like bempodoic acid, ezetimibe, and injectable PCSK9 inhibitors. Such a variety of polypharmacy can be used to control your LDL levels very well. And that's why the primary or the secondary prevention is very effective. And the basis of that is a good lifestyle that is correct diet and exercise. To put it into nutshell, LDL is the culprit that causes blockages in the arteries. It can be high in very few people right from birth, so it needs to be checked very early. For most people, when it is diagnosed at the age of 40, there is no need to panic because wonderful interventions are available to control it. The best way to tackle it when there is no disease, but if it is diagnosed after a disease is diagnosed, the levels are stricter. So at whatever level you get diagnosed, either 100 or 55 or 30 can be achieved by good diet, exercise, and very effective medicines which are available today. It is thought that these medicines will have side effects in the long run, but they are tested for long run. The first statin was introduced almost 30 years ago and it is still working wonders to the humanity. In fact, the side effects of having high LDL cholesterol for a long time 
are worse as compared to the so-called side effects of these drugs. The side effect profile is to the tune of 3 to 5 percent. Some muscle pain, some liver problems, they are all well known to us and we doctors can really manage them very well. For people at large, a good lifestyle matters the most. After that, if you are really found to have a problem in your blood cholesterol, it can be managed very effectively by medication. So primary or secondary prevention is possible and it can keep you reasonably free from heart attacks and strokes and other disastrous complications of atherosclerosis. Thank you so much for those simplified gems of information about the heart. Thank you to all our listeners for joining and listening to our today's podcast. We hope you found today's episode informative and inspiring. We are here to support you in your endeavor of keeping your heart healthy. We truly care about your heart health and would like to see you succeed and remain healthy. Remember, you have the power to make positive changes in your life and we are here to help you achieve those goals. So let us all commit to living heart healthy lives together. Thank you for being a part of this community. Until the next time, stay healthy and before you go, do give us a like. If you have any other questions or comments, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. The link to connect with us is there in the description below. Do share this podcast with your friends and family and also share it on your social media. Sign up for our newsletters and leave your questions or your comments below. Thank you so much for listening to us. Till the next time, this is Dr. Man Kapoor. Bye-bye. See you all. Stay healthy, stay fit and fine.